this is the new Galaxy A14 5G. Besides the flagship S23 series, I think this is probably the most discussed Samsung phone right now. It's the cheapest 5G phone that the company currently sells and just look at it. It has quite an attractive look too. So I was quite curious to know more about the phone, but I could not find that many proper reviews of it on YouTube, which is really weird for such a hyped product. So I bought the Galaxy A14 for myself and yeah, I regret it. This is easily, easily one of the worst budget phones that you can get right now and it's not even close. That 15,000 starting price might sound appealing at first, but when you dig a little deeper, you will find that the Galaxy A14 is not actually that affordable after all. First off, its base variant only comes with 4GB RAM and 64GB storage, which is simply not enough for Samsung's One UI in 2023. So 6128GB is the minimum requirement if you want a half-decent smartphone experience in the first place. Not to mention, Samsung does not even offer some basic accessories like a power adapter, a pre-applied screen protector, and a clear case inside the box. And all that really adds up to the final cost, which ultimately washes away Samsung's cheap 5G phone under 15,000 Indian rupees marketing claims. Okay, let me explain why I am so utterly disappointed in this phone and why you should not waste your hard-earned money on the Galaxy A14 starting with the design. As you can see, Samsung has taken visual cues from the S23 series and combined them with these ridges to create a cool looking phone, especially this light green option that we have. The side frames are also slightly curved, making the fingerprint scanner more accessible while improving the grip as well. So far, so good, right? But all this changes when you flip the phone 180 degrees. Those thick bezels and that water drop notch look outdated even for a budget phone in 2023. And its display is nothing impressive either. At this price point, AMOLED screen is quite common, but you only get a PLS screen here, which is Samsung's equivalent of an IPS panel. Don't get me wrong, its colors and viewing angles are also quite good for an LCD screen, but no kidding, it's nowhere near an AMOLED panel. A good display had been something of a major selling point in Samsung phones in this segment uh, like two to three years ago, but sadly the company is now falling behind most of its competitors like Xiaomi and Realme. Also, the fact that the Galaxy A14 has a single bottom firing speaker is another bummer. So um, I miss that richer stereo output while listening to music or even watching movies on this thing. Now, the performance part here is a bit trickier since the Exynos 1330 chip powering this phone actually looks pretty capable on paper. In fact, it is as powerful as the Exynos 1280 found on last year's premium mid-range phones like the Galaxy A53 and the Galaxy A33. But well, raw power is essentially useless if the processor has not been optimized enough to make the most out of it. This is something I have experienced in many Samsung phones before, including the Galaxy A33 and A53, and unfortunately, I got to relive all that on the Galaxy A14 once again. To be fair, it's good enough for small, lightweight tasks like phone calls, messages, and web browsing, but pushing it only a little further by bringing some multitasking into the mix is when the phone starts showing its true colors. I occasionally notice the phone stutter trying to switch between different apps as well, whereas uh, it would also take a bit longer to open big apps and games. The lack of proper optimization continues in the gaming arena too. For instance, PUBG Mobile maxes out at just 30 FPS even at the lowest graphics option. Out of all the games I tested, only Call of Duty played nicely with this latest Exynos chip. And the A14's cooling solution is not that effective either, which means the phone cannot sustain the same level of performance for longer sessions. This is most noticeable when playing heavier games like Genshin Impact. Not only does the phone get quite warm, but there are also frame drops more often than you would like. It's the same when playing high FPS titles like Critical Ops and Mech Arena 2. On the software side, the Galaxy A14 ships with the new One UI 5 core. And although Samsung promises two years of Android and four years of security updates for this phone, 
I can guarantee you that its base variant is not going to age as well as you would imagine. Like I said right at the beginning, its uh, base 464GB configuration is pretty much useless unless you uh, plan to use this phone for just calls and texts. Out of the 64GB storage, the system takes around 15GB and the remaining 50GB is not going to be enough given how resource-hungry modern apps have become. So you can probably imagine how things are going to turn out in say like a couple of years. Now let's talk about the cameras. The Galaxy A14 sports a triple camera setup at the back consisting of a 50 megapixel primary, a 2 megapixel depth and a 2 megapixel macro sensor. Yep, there is no ultra wide angle camera here. Anyway, we all know that Samsung's camera optimization is quite impressive in the budget segment, but it's uh, not like the competition has absolutely terrible cameras or anything. So I uh, compared the Galaxy A14 with the Poco X5, aka the Redmi Note 12, and found that the images from Samsung look a bit livelier with poppy colors and better dynamic range. However, like most budget phones, both of them struggle in low light conditions. Although turning on night mode helps a little with the A14 managing better shots once again. And Samsung has a definite win in terms of portraits too. It does a pretty good job of retaining the subject's natural skin tone, whereas the Poco X5's portraits look warm and contrast heavy. I also like how the selfies from its 13 megapixel sensor come off quite lively. So overall, photo-wise, it is marginally better than the competition. Then again, the Galaxy A14's videography aspect is half-baked right now. Samsung says the Exynos 1330 can record up to 4K 30fps, but the phone is limited to just 1080p 30fps videos from both the front and the back cameras. Likewise, the battery life on this phone is also quite good as I am easily getting a full day on moderate usage. And with a relatively easier usage pattern, I could even extend it up to two days. No sweat. But since the phone only supports 15 watt charging, a full refill takes quite long, around uh, two and a half hours to be precise. Okay, to sum it all up, the Galaxy A14 5G is simply not that attractive value for money deal that you might think it is. Not to mention, it's not that impressive of a phone on multiple critical aspects like display and performance either. So a good alternative to this phone um, under like 20,000 Indian rupees would be last year's models like the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, the Moto G82 or the Moto H20, which not only offer better performance, but brings a high refresh rate OLED screen, an ultra wide angle camera and a faster charging support. Whereas if you're willing to ditch 5G, you can get phones like the Realme 10 and the Moto G72 at a much cheaper price than this one. And um, even if you are fixated on getting a 5G phone from Samsung, last year's Galaxy F23 makes more sense as it boasts a much superior spec sheet, all at a cheaper price. So everyone, that was my detailed and very honest review of this budget Samsung phone. If you agree with me, do let us know in the comments below. And uh, if you like our content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.